Hey Blockheads, welcome to Chicago Yard Rigging. My name is Christian Martinsic and I'm the owner and rigger here. I'd like to talk to you about what it is I do for a living and we're going to talk about the different systems of rigging. Here in the shop we make standing and running rigging. As you know, standing rigging is the system that supports the mast and things like your forestay, your backstay, and your shrouds. And running rigging is the, is the rope, it's the things like the halyards, sheets, and control lines that control your sails. As a rigger, we spend a lot of time in the shop. That's where we do our production and, and making things like sheets and halyards, but we also do installation. So, especially in, in summer and busy times, we'll, we'll probably spend about half our time out on the water in the harbors or sailing with customers. In the winter, it's a lot less, but we do quite a bit of work in boat yards, uh, getting the boats ready for the next season. So one of the things a rigger will do is help you select the rope, the right rope for your needs. And what we'll do is we'll take the, the rope here and turn it into line. We'll take it off the spool and then we'll add splices and treatments to make it work for your boat. Things like the reeving eye splice on the tail of the halyard to help pull it through the mast, the, the taper, because this is a tapered halyard to save weight and friction. This is the core, it's the inside of the rope, and it takes all the load and does all the work in terms of stretch and strength. This is the cover. This is the braid that we add onto the top. It's the second part of the double braid, and it's what gives us a nice surface to handle and hold in clutches and winches and cleats. And then we'll also do the eye splice for your shackle. A lot of times before, before it leaves the shop, we'll also give your halyards a stretch so that they work just right the first time you put them on the boat. You don't have to see a lot of stretch the first time the sail goes up. So it's not just cutting a rope and sending it out. Same kind of thing for standing rigging. Um, you're, you're cutting wire, you're measuring it exactly, you're making your deductions for how much it's going to change in, while you make it. When standing rigging is made, we use a process called swedging to add a fitting onto the end of the wire. It's it's kind of a neat process because what we do is we actually crush the fitting and deform it so that it grabs the wire and holds on. The way we do that is by using a lot of force. We have a hydraulic uh, five-ton ram that actually pulls the fitting through two metal uh, assemblies called dies. And what they do is they deform the swedge fitting around the wire and actually crush it and form it so that it sticks to the wire. There's another way to do standing rigging in which you don't use a swedger. You can use a mechanical terminal, which is something that kind of s you disassemble the wire and then you reassemble it with the, with the terminal over it and that holds it all together. Something you'll hear me refer to often is a clutch. So let me get one and show you how it works and how it's different from a cam cleat. We all know your basic cam cleat. It's got two moving parts called cams that are spring loaded and clamped down on the rope. The harder the rope pulls, the more it clamps down and the better it holds. A clutch works in a similar way. It's got two or more mov moving parts that clamp the rope but it's for higher loads and for, for bigger boats, and it also has a handle that you can release it with. Unlike with a cam cleat, where you have to pull on the line to release it, this one has a, has a handle that opens up the jaws and releases the line. You'll see clutches on bigger boats, oftentimes for holding halyards, because that's a line that, once it's up, it doesn't move very much. You can trim a line through a clutch, but whenever you want to ease the line, you do have to release it. Sometimes you'll see them on things like main sheets and other control lines on the boats, but mostly, a clutch is going to be used for halyards. In terms of trends in rigging, most of, most of our trends are actually responses to sail making. As sails have gotten lower and lower stretch, rigging got exposed as the weak link. If you think about something like a carbon sail, uh, it's incredibly low stretch, but it's, it's not good for anything if the halyard that's behind it stretches or if the clutch that's holding it slips. So we've kind of had two advances that have matched the, the high-tech sails. We have lower stretch cores, things like PBO and, and heat set Dyneema are now matching the stretch that you have in the sail. And then just as important, we have the high-tech covers. Um, if you think about the sail and the halyard as a system, if the sail doesn't stretch and the halyard core doesn't stretch, all that load ends up right at the clutch. And if you have a cover that's not up to the task, it'll either slip through the clutch or it will break. So everything we do is kind of driven by matching the technology that's in sales. I hope you enjoyed finding out a little bit more about what a rigger does. Come back soon for more videos.